Thanksgiving dinner can be cheap or expensive, but oftentimes it ends up being expensive because you buy more than you need, blah, 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 blah. But I think that we can make it for less than $50. And that is but cheap. I feel like personally, I spend a ton of money on Thanksgiving, but supposedly the average is $50 for a 10 person meal. That's not true. There's no way that that is true. Every time I have Thanksgiving for 10 or 15 or maybe even 20 people, it's gonna be well over a $500 marker, potentially into the $1,000 marker because we're buying tons of butter and nice ingredients and yada, 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 yada. The point is it can be cheap or it can be expensive, but we're gonna look at the cheapest possible way to make the nicest Thanksgiving that we possibly can for this price. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Really quick, before we start the video, I just wanna remind everybody to go to the link in the description and watch Cody Co. and I's collab. We ate pie, we had fun, it was great. I showed him how to cut a slice of pie because he could use some work on that. There'll be a link in the description for his episode of Sweet Tooth, so go check that out. And we have a couple other videos together coming soon. Okay, so a couple things to note. You might have a smaller Thanksgiving than usual, which uh, makes sense. So this will account for about 10 to 15 people. Let's first talk turkey. Believe it or not, I got mine for $7 because I bought it early and I bought it frozen, which usually gets you a pretty insane deal. Otherwise, it'll be around $17. So get your plump boy out, address him, of course, uh, and save the turkey neck. That is uh, a neck. <laughs> It looks a little funny, but uh, it, it, that's the neck, okay? Get your mind out of the gutter, please. Now using good kitchen shears, very specifically good, otherwise this will happen, which is sad. Then you're gonna cut along both sides of the turkey's back to carefully remove the spine like this. Save that as well. Then take your turkey, place it cut side down, arrange the legs, and press firmly on the breast to flatten the bird. You've now spatch cocked. Yes, that's a real term, your turkey. Instead of going back and buying stock just for gravy, take the turkey neck and the spine, place it in a pot, along with one rough chopped onion, one rough chopped carrot, and one rough chopped rib of celery. Cover it with six cups of water, or enough to completely cover the bones, whichever comes first, then place it on your stove over medium high heat, and as soon as it comes to a boil, reduce to low and let it simmer for three hours. And once it's done, just strain out all the vegetables and meaty bits so that you've got a lovely turkey stock. Okay, so what about bread? If you want the good stuff, it's gonna cost you. So instead, I made my dinner roll recipe, which is extremely cheap, very, very easy to make, and well, just feels good, brother. All you gotta do is rise the dough, punch it down, shape it, place it in an eight by eight container, proof it, bake the brother, hit it with a fatty of melted butter, and finish it with flaky salt. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Beautifully perfect, and they cost a grand total of bada bing, this right here. That's pretty good for a fine bakery style bun. Most cranberry sauces are usually as tasty as they are expensive. And by that, I mean they're cheap and they make Papa sad, so. If you just use fresh cranberries, you'll have a much nicer time. <laughs> In a medium-sized sauce pot, add one 12-ounce package of fresh cranberries, one cup or 130 grams of granulated sugar, half a cup or 120 milliliters of filtered water, and finally, the zest and juice of one orange. You can also use lemon if you prefer. Place it on the stove over medium-high heat, stirring occasionally until it comes to a boil, then reduce the heat to low and let that brother simmer for about 15 minutes or until thickened and syrupy. Then just let it cool completely, and yes, that's it. You have a lovely, perfect cranberry sauce. Now we've got stuffing, or, well, dressing? I don't know, I find this argument to be very annoying. Oh, Josh, it's not stuffing unless it's stuffed in the orifice of a bird, blah, blah, blah. It achieves the same thing, really. Anyway, I'm off my soapbox. I'm sure people are gonna get mad at me about that. This is a perfect recipe where if you have leftover bread like I do, then you're in a good spot to save a ton of money. Either way, you'll need two large loaves of bread, ideally sourdough. It can also be a mix of two kinds like you see here. Then slice both of those loaves into one inch neat cubes. Give it a light drizzle of olive oil, place those all on a baking sheet and place it in the oven. Set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes or till toasted and dry. Dump that into a large bowl and set to the side. In a medium sized sauce pot, add three quarters of a cup or 168 grams of unsalted butter. Heat that over medium heat until melted and bubbling. Then add five finely diced shallots, three ribs of sliced celery, and four cloves of rough chopped garlic. Season that to taste with salt and pepper and saute just until those guys start to soften. Then add one tablespoon or six grams of fresh chopped sage and one tablespoon or four grams of finely chopped fresh thyme along with a handful of finely chopped fresh parsley. Stir and cook until fragrant, about 20 more seconds. Then add one cup of turkey stock or chicken stock if you didn't make it and you're trying to make me upset. Bring that up to a steamy heat, then pour that all over your toasted bread. Toss together until thoroughly combined. Now separately whisk together one more cup of stock and two whole eggs until thoroughly combined. 
Pour that over your bread and toss together once more. Then spray a 9 by 13 baking dish with oil, add in all of your soaked bread, and place in an oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius for 35 to 45 minutes. Or until cooked through and the top is beautifully browned and crisp. That layer is a classy looking dressing with a bit more of a sophisticated flavor. Now the main event, Mr. Redundant. Thanksgiving turkey. I, look, I'm tired of it, but we're doing it anyway. Start off with a medium sized bowl and add three quarters of a cup or 168 grams of unsalted softened butter, one and a half teaspoons of MSG. Yes, we're doing that. One and a half teaspoons of kosher salt and three cloves of freshly grated garlic. Mix that together until thoroughly combined and you've got a garlic MSG butter. Wield its massive power with great care and responsibility. Oh yeah! Now season your turkey generously with salt and pepper. Take half that butter and rub it all over your turkey. Really give your bird a nice little massage, a sort of papa style massage. I also like to put a little bit underneath the skin as well so it coats the meat while roasting. Normally I would place this on a wire rack set over a baking sheet to roast, but for some reason I tried to fit it in a roasting pan with vegetables and well, long story short, if you do that, it's gonna take way too long for your bird to cook. So I'd recommend a baking sheet instead so air can circulate around it. Anyway, pop your turkey in the oven, set to 450 Fahrenheit or 232 Celsius for 50 to 60 minutes or until the skin is a gorgeous golden brown and the deepest part of the turkey clocks in at around 165 Fahrenheit. Let your bird rest for at least 20 minutes, then carve it up and slice the meat into nice even pieces. Now for vegetable sides, I actually prefer to toss this into the oven while the turkey's still roasting. But either way, get yourself one to two large butternut squash, peel them all the way down, cut their bottoms and tops off, then cut that big filler in half, remove all the seeds, also known as the part that made us gag when we were kids, I know you know. Okay, if you know, you know. Then just cut your butternut into nice even one inch cubes like you see right here. Place them in a large bowl, toss with enough oil to coat them, season to taste with salt and pepper. I actually really like these with a nice curry seasoning. This one is a Vodavon spice blend. Toss together again until evenly coated and seasoned. Now dump them onto a foil lined baking sheet, place in an oven set to 450 Fahrenheit or 232 Celsius for 30 minutes or until cooked through and lightly caramelized. Separately, I do the same process with green beans. Get yourself one and a half to two pounds of green beans, hit them with a nice glug of olive oil, season them with salt and pepper to taste and obviously any other seasonings you want and roast at the same temp, but this time for only 20 minutes or until nicely cooked with a little bit of snap left in them. Then just finish them with some lemon juice and flaky salt optionally. So for your mashed titers, it's real simple. Go ahead and Peel two and a half pounds of a nice starchy potato like russet. Yukon Golds also work fine. Cut them into one and a half inch cubes that are ideally nice and even. Toss them in a nice pot, cover them with water, season that water generously with salt, then just boil those guys for about 10 minutes, then drain your potatoes through a colander or a mesh sieve and place them back in the original pot that they were in. In a separate sauce pot, add half a cup of unsalted butter and half a cup of whole milk. Set that over medium heat and let that heat up until the butter is fully melted and the mixture is nice and hot. Using a handheld masher, crush and mash up your potatoes as fine as they'll go, then add your milky butter mixture, mash that in nicely, then mix in a third cup of sour cream. From there, just season your potatoes with salt and pepper. Make sure your potatoes are seasoned nicely. Optionally, you can add chives here too. Now, right before the turkey is served, you'll need to make your gravy. It's really so much easier than people realize. Please make your own. In a medium saucepan, heat three and a half tablespoons of unsalted butter over medium heat. Then once it's completely melted, whisk in three and a half tablespoons of all purpose flour. Then just keep cooking and whisking for about 30 seconds, just to cook out some of that flour. Then slowly whisk in two and a half cups of your turkey stock, which is free. It's free real estate, what can I say? Keep whisking and heating until it thickens and you'll have a lovely gravy. Then just season it to taste with salt and pepper. And optionally, you can add some chopped herbs like fresh chopped thyme or whatever you're feeling. What's the herb vibe today, really? And that is gravy. Now look, I know what you're thinking, Josh, what about pie? Well, for one, pumpkin pie isn't just the most common choice, but it's also one of the cheapest options as well. I use my pumpkin pie recipe, which uses real pumpkin. And obviously you can find that on the channel here or in the links in the description. Look at me, always reminding you to tell you guys to go to the link in the description. Oh my gosh, the plug. Now, what we have in front of us here is a feast fit for a king. Well, a frugal one, but nonetheless, he do be eating kind of good though. For this price, <laughs> Don't think you can beat it. So this is butt cheaper at night. We had all of this made for the measly price said right here. Grand total, that's not half bad. I think we did a pretty darn good job. It comes down to simplifying the menu and just using technique to make things taste great without a multitude of ingredients. Without further ado. The thing that makes this meal special is a little friend I like to call MSG. The MSG butter that I made in this, in my opinion, is the most applicable, universal, amazing thing in the world. I could eat that alone all day. Cranberry sauce, sugar, orange juice, 
and cranberries. And it's about 100 times better than that fruity sausage that slithers out of a can and plops onto your plate. Not to say that I'm pooping on anybody, because the cranberry sauce already did it for me, but just make it your damn self. Let's also introduce the turkey, which also has the MSG butter. Somehow, the turkey tastes more like turkey. Second off, not dry. I'm gonna say this one last time. A turkey should be perfectly juicy and flavorful and tender. With or without the MSG, just cook it right, okay? I'm not gonna taste every single thing on this plate. The stuffing is amazing, the turkey is amazing, potatoes, everything is good. Oh, I gotta eat this too. Obviously it's good, otherwise I wouldn't be talking about it. So, you don't have to spend $1,000 or $500 or whatever on a Thanksgiving meal for 10 to 15 people. You can definitely do it for under $100. If that's not much cheaper, then I don't know what the hell is, brother! The sun's about to go down, so um, I think it's time to be, uh... <sighs> You want to know what else is full of a misleading story about pilgrims? B-roll. Alright guys, and that is it. So, we made Thanksgiving dinner, and it was beautiful. It was a great Thanksgiving dinner. It wasn't like the basic choices of like, the turkey and some salad and a little bit of mashed potatoes with a bland gravy. We threw in some MSG, we got a little culinary, you know, like something like that. I don't know what I'm saying, but yes. On an unrelated note, I got my hair cut recently and everyone on Instagram was saying that I look like Lord Farquaad. If I look like Lord Farquaad, let us know in the comments below. But with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. <laughs>